Thank you very much for having me here. I have deep gratitude towards those who have worked tirelessly for our voices to be heard and to those here listening with compassionate and open hearts poised to make positive changes toward these matters at hand, changes that need to come from the root. I'm a Gulf War era service connected disabled veteran. I was raped during military service and during my first assignment. That was 1988. I was 18 years old. It was two weeks before my 19th birthday. This happened in a foreign country, away from American soil, while I was stationed in Germany. I did not report it for reasons which will become clear as I tell my story. That would not be the last time I would be assaulted or harassed. This is my story, but it's not mine alone. More than 19,000 men and women every year share similar stories. That year, the year that I was raped, that same year I was raped again by another soldier in, in my unit. Another year, I was sexually harassed by a commissioned officer in my unit. By 1990, between 1990 and 90, 1991, another NCO in my unit began to harass me through inappropriate touching words and behavior. This NCO then requested from my command that I be moved to work directly for him in a work environment where there was no access, closed and windowless key entry coded vault. Upon receiving my new shift schedule, I can only compare the anguish of this, this entrapment to discovering your child has been constantly molested by a person of authority. I was at mental and emotional collapse. A senior woman NCO in my unit helped me to write a written statement to present to my command and to file a formal complaint. A complaint that my command answered by no official hearing, no written response, and it was only answered la later with a verbal response from my first sergeant who asked me what did I want and that I had misunderstood this NCO's intentions toward me. The only thing that I wanted at that time was two basic things. One was an apology and for the harassment to stop, that was all. I didn't know what was happening, and at no time did anyone ever move forward with my formal complaint, nor was anyone willing to discuss the process with me. They did, however, remove me from his team, and his formal apology consisted of him driving by me on base, rolling down his window, and saying to me, sorry. So after that, in the days that followed, I was verbally and socially harassed put on extra duties that conflicted with my medical profile and socially isolated. Eventually, I was given a choice to either get out or to face possible UCMJ action myself. Most women who are victim of sexual harassment or abuse are threatened and charged with UCMJ action. And so I felt I had no choice. I was literally terrified. And so in that terrified, position I was paralyzed and I just chose I chose to get out because that was the option that was given to me within a week I had orders out of Germany and I was escorted by two NCOs to my plane and that was it my career was over and please note that in that unit I was not the only one that was sexually assaulted or sexually harassed many women came to me and said they had had the same situation happened, but they never told me who, in fact, did this. Returning to the U.S. and civilian life was, dis was difficult, and I had a lot of false starts. I had a lot of negative behaviors that get carried over from the military. I was anxious and overly protective. I became suicidal and had suicidal attempts. I went through severe depression and had multiple severe medical illnesses and was unable to carry on the rigors of work, for which I was highly trained for. I repeatedly moved from place to place and was homeless, was homeless and medically disabled, but not even the VA would recognize this and help me till some two decades later. I lost many material things and emotional relationships in my lifetime and struggled with my faith. 
I grieve because I feel I was the lucky one. I left my, uni my unit alive with an honorable discharge. And although discombobulated and scared for my life and my future, many leave with less than honorable discharges and personality disorders on their records, further hindering them from applying for medical treatment and medical claims. Some, like PFC, Lavina Johnson, don't come home, home to their parents alive. 22 years later, almost to the day of my early ETS, I was awarded veteran service compensation and service connection for military sexual trauma. Can you tell me, why did it take so long? Why did I have to go through so much before anyone would listen to me? Why did I have to be violated again through the process of asking for help and, seek, and seeking claim status? Today I volunteer, and this helps to ground me, I, I volunteer through, veteran, through different veterans um, organizations, Art Reach Foundation. I participate in listening sessions to help organize organizations like the Sierra Club and Warrior Songs better understand the many facets of women veterans' needs for their programmatic purposes. My history is chronicled with other women and men veterans in the doc well, in men, women in the documentary service when women come marching home. I'm a social media peer supporter and technology advocate through women veterans social justice, and I collaborate with both community and veteran organizations of dozens and dozens of other organizations. Uh, I speak and spoke at the Surgeon General's Task Force for, home, for Suicide Prevention because suicide and homelessness are two huge issues in the mil military sexual trauma community. And with the claims denial and lack of purposeful medical treatment exacerbating those issues. Of course, PTSD from MST is the main contributing factor. I have to say I no longer have any faith or hope that the military chain of command will consistently prosecute, convict, sentence, and carry out the sentencing of sexual predators in, in uniform without absconding justice somehow. Only 8% of them are prosecuted. How many are relieved of their duties, their pensions, their careers? How many of them are placed on na a national registry as sex offenders before they are returned to civilian life? And even asking that, what happens to the 92% that weren't? sentence are prosecuted. Let's not allow sexual predators who happen to wear a uniform the opportunity to become highly trained, highly degreed, military decorated sexual predators. Let's make sure they are convicted and dishonorably discharged and listed on the National Registry. Let's do this before they go unnoticed in our communities to further harm our service members, our community, and our family members. Sexual assault and trauma has deep and broad roots in the military. Let's not just pluck a few leaves and trim the branch. Let's deal with this from the roots. Please make it stop. This has been a Sunfish production.